Now I want to start this video out by saying, first of all, I think emissions are very important for the environment. But if you don't have them, um, free reign, right? Now with with not having emissions in Washington State, I want to delete everything emissions related in that car, except for having a catalytic converter. I'm still going to run that just because I don't like the the awful like burnt unburnt fuely smell of being catless. So. I'm gonna show you guys how to delete the evap solenoid out of the car. To do a full evap delete, you need to drop the fuel tank, pull the charcoal canisters out of the car, block off some other ports at the rear end. We're not gonna be doing all that. All we're doing is everything in the front half of the car today, in the engine bay, because I don't want it. I don't want it, don't want any of it. First of all, the car is throwing a code for it. We're getting rid of it. I talked to the tuner, he was like, yeah, you can go ahead and do the evap delete, it's not a problem. And if you don't have emissions, you could probably get away with doing this also. Now keep in mind, if you live in California or any of these other like big states that are like huge on emissions, you can't do this. You cannot do this at all. But if you're in a state that doesn't have emissions, free reign, get rid of it. Let me show you what I'm talking about. If you're looking at the front of the engine bay, you got your boost control solenoid cover right here. Then like right down here is all your evap solenoid stuff. It goes to the turbo inlet, goes to a couple other vacuum ports. We're gonna be getting rid of all that. We're gonna cover in detail what the evap solenoid actually does and what the evap system does after I get it out of the car. But there's also a hard line up in the top right of the engine bay, if you're looking at it from the front, that goes up to another hard line coming out from the firewall. Now that just goes back to the gas tank for vapor and other fumes that are being put off by the system. So the whole reason I'm deleting this is because A, it's throwing me a code. I don't care to fix it. I can delete it. So we're going to get rid of it. First things first, cover's got to come off. Then I'm going to start pulling all this stuff off. After I get the cover off, I'll give you guys a better view of what's actually going on in here. So that way you can see all the hoses and like the spider web of crap of just evap. So let me get that cover off and then I'll give you guys that better image of it. God, lighting right now is breaking me, dude. It is killing me. So if you're looking at it, you can see all the spider webness down in here. You're gonna have a vacuum line going up to your intake manifold, one going to the top of the turbo inlet. There's a T that goes down there up to that back right corner, couple electrical plugs. So let me get all this pulled out so I can actually show you guys on the bench over there what all of this goes to and what it all looks like because there's no way i'm going to be able to say hey this hose goes there that hose goes there with just that clutter of mess shoved right in here so i'm gonna pull all of this out so that way we can actually walk through it and then i'll show you how to cap all these off where to put everything what you don't need and what you can toss in the bin and how to reroute that line up there because we're just, like I said, we're just gonna vent all of this to the atmosphere. I don't care. We're the, let's just, let's get rid of the spider webness. I'm not okay with this. So got it all out. The the plugs were like really on there. Like these things did not want to let go at all. There's two electrical plugs and then there's two vacuum ports that you're going to plug up. So one of them is right here on top of the turbo inlet. That is very difficult to see because the sun is being stupid right now. But there's this one right on top of the turbo inlet here. The other one is just on the intake manifold right there. You're going to unbolt one of the solenoids from right there. And then there's a 12 millimeter plug. Oh, well, there's a 12 millimeter bolt right down there that holds the other solenoid cover. Now I'm just going to take some electrical tape here. I'm going to mask up those two plug connectors, tuck them away because we're not going to need them anymore. And then I went to the auto parts store and just picked up two packs of these like plug kits. We're just going to put these plugs on the end of the intake manifold here and on top of the turbo inlet there just to get rid of those. So that way we don't have to worry about the evap system right there anymore. If you don't have a plug kit, you're gonna need a plug kit or at least just some universal plugs from the auto parts store. I think it was like seven bucks for two packs just because I didn't know what sizes I was gonna need. So I'm gonna go ahead, throw those on there. I'm also gonna swap out this boost solenoid cover because I have a process west one that I can now use because I don't need that second hole for the uh, evap solenoid anymore. So that's kind of nice. It's really gonna clean the area up a lot more. I'm not gonna have any extra extra vacuum lines that could cause potential boost leaks or anything like that. So that is all hunky dory to get. Now I want to plug the, or I want to tape and plug these real quick. I want to plug that hole and then that hole right there. And then we'll go over to the bench. I have 
the entire EVAP solenoid system kind of set up so that way I can walk you guys through how it works. So I'm gonna get those plugged and set up. I'm gonna swap that cover out. We're, we're gonna come back to doing that top line here in a minute, but I just kind of want to finish one area before jumping to another. So let me get this picked up real quick. I'll show you why, how I tuck everything away, but pretty simple to remove. There's only two vacuum ports that you gotta plug up. Let me get this taken care of and then I'll walk you through how the EVAP system actually works. Bam, there is the EVAP system. So I pulled out the stock fuel rails just to be able to show you guys how this works because it does tie into the stock fuel rails. So these are what we removed down here, these two solenoids and sensors. So this side right here went to the turbo inlet going off of this sensor up here that just bolted into that cover back there. This one bolted down to the bottom of the intake manifold and this tube here went to the intake manifold. I'll show you guys back on the car. And then there's a T where they connect and that T goes to the stock fuel rails. So it transitions to this hard line here, which then goes up, comes up to where it would pop up out of the intake manifold to another soft line. This soft line would go to where the hard line comes out of the firewall right there. So you're gonna have to fish that one out from the car if this is something that you're doing, but look at how much room that that freed up. There's, I could stick my hand, I could stick a fist. I can fist the engine now. So these are the these are what we capped off. So this is the intake manifold port. This is the turbo inlet port. So all of that crap is now like, it's gone. It feels it, like it's so much nicer having all of that out of the way also, which is, it frees up so much more room. Now, for that hard line up here, I don't wanna just vent all of the vapor and gases out of here. I'm just gonna run, I'm gonna bend this line a little bit so that way it points like towards the fender and I'm gonna run a soft line that wraps around that just drops into the fender. So that way all those gases are just being vented out into the wheel well so we don't have to smell them. I have some quarter inch line that I'm gonna be running on this from here out to the fender so that way no smell, no smelly smell. So I'm gonna get that kind of set up here. But the whole re the whole thing the EVAP system does is it detects like pressure vapor buildup in the system, gets rid of it, filters back to the charcoal canister for emissions. Don't care to have it. I don't need it. It frees up more room out of the car and it's less pain points for things that can fail later down the road. So this whole system here is we're done with it. At some point, whenever we go to drop the fuel tank out of the car, then we will delete like the charcoal canister, the rest of the EVAP stuff. I mean, it's not a lot of weight that comes out. It's maybe like five to seven pounds, but if I don't need it in the car, I'd rather have it out. So let me run this soft line real quick and then uh, we'll start getting the car reassembled a little bit more. But ooh, boy, am I happy with this. We have taken out so much crap in here that we just no longer need. EVAP, secondary air pump, shields, all the, all the schmoo. I also have a new upper coolant reservoir coming for the car, which I'm stoked to get on because I ran one of my old Hawkeye, beautiful construction. I'll show you guys when we get that one in. We have that mini battery going on, which I actually have over here, which I'm a little stoked for. I'm also a little nervous because I don't know if the bags are gonna be able to keep up with this. We're gonna be using the Grim Speed mount. You'll definitely get a video on this. I'll do weight differences between this Odyssey Extreme and the current OEM Subaru battery that I have in the car, but I'm getting off topic. That's a whole nother video. I'm just excited to get that one in because it's definitely gonna free up a lot of room near the intake or near the charge piping up here. So it's not like hitting the battery anymore. Cause I mean, don't get me wrong. The battery's functional, but it's a little big. Let's run the hard line. I'll show you the routing that I do for the hard line up here. And then we'll get the alternator cover back on and just see how much more like free room we have over there. But stoked to do this. Let me wrap this uh, EVAP delete up. It's really not that hard to do. You can do it at home in probably like 10, 15 minutes. So I'm gonna get this guy bent like this direction so that way we can keep going on this. God, look how much cleaner it is right there now. No more like spider web of crap. Plus we got it like our nice process West cover back on there. The engine bay is really, it's starting to look a lot better than it was before. A lot of extra crap. It's gonna look really good with that half battery in there. So that thing's not taking up all like massive amounts of room. And with like, ah, oh, I just wanna take it all out if it's not needed. So we're still gonna be doing that comp AOS at some point later down the road. 
Um, but since we're talking about EVAP today and we just got that out, I am curious if the car is gonna start up any different not having that sensor even plugged in because it was already throwing a code for the EVAP system before. So, I mean, let's just, let's find out. Let's see if it just doesn't wanna cooperate. There's that lovely smell in here again. So, well, let's just, I know it's gonna take a sec to start up. It does it every time. And oil, low oil pressure light for some reason. Not quite sure why. All right, let's, uh, let's test this out. EVAP codes now. That's all right. Don't care for them. It's all EVAP system related. I'm not worried about the EVAP codes that are coming up. Car still starts up just fine. Everything is running as normal. It's running a little bit rich right now, but like I said, we're still on the version one of the base map, so I'm gonna let it idle for a couple minutes anyways. I haven't started the car today, so we're just gonna let it hang out. Oil pressure's also looking good. My little gauge down here fell off, so I'm gonna have to fix that also, but eh. So I'm gonna let this guy run for a couple minutes. If anything changes, I'll let you know, but we'll wrap this video up as soon as, ah, as soon as this guy is uh, done warming up. In all honesty, the car feels like it runs so much better with all that EVAP crap out of it. Like it's all, just, to me, it's unnecessary. Like I said, don't have emissions up here. Don't need it. So as soon as I started the car, after I shut the camera off, I played with the throttle a little bit. The throttle response feels so much better. However, I think that's more attributed to the ECU learning the parameters of the new map than the EVAP sensor. But overall, don't need it. The car runs just fine without it. The tuner is going to shut off all the codes for me when we go to get pro tuned. So it's only about a three hour drive down to the tuner on the base map. So I'm going to take it easy. I'm going to stay out of boost the entire way. Cruise in the far right lane at like 50 miles an hour. Not, not even try to get in a boost on the car until we get that pro tune on it. So. Like I said, super pumped to start removing anything unnecessary and not needed in there and reducing like the footprint of things that we don't want or don't need. So that smaller battery is gonna go in. Might do that this afternoon and shoot another video on that one. Might do it tomorrow, not sure. It all depends on editing and a couple other things that I have going on. Uh, I gotta make some new merchandise designs, which if you guys haven't already, I don't, I never plug merchandise, but I would greatly appreciate it if you guys grabbed like stickers, hoodies, anything. Like I said, this is my full-time gig. Very hard, very difficult to do everything and continue like doing stuff like this. But if you don't want any, you can't afford it, don't do it. If you have been contemplating that you wanting that you want some, snag it. They're all down below in the description. Like, it, yeah, it's in the description and in the little banner thing, but it's enough of a shameless plug. I'll do it like once every 30 videos or something like that. I never plug stuff, but anyways, EVAP system, incredibly easy to delete. $7 for the plug. Actually, since I bought two of them, it's a $3.50 modification if you're going to get pro tuned and you don't have emissions. Why not pull it out? You don't need it. But there we have it, my friends. If you like the video, go ahead, hit that thumbs up, turn it blue like the Subaru. Ooh. And if you're not already subscribed to the channel, which I would greatly appreciate it if you were, let's do one of these corners. I'm not even gonna try to like guesstimate with my arm because I'm always like incredibly off. But with that, I will catch you guys in the next one. Actually, I'll see you tomorrow. Peace out, homies. Woo!